We're going to have a quick look today at where it all starts, where health anxiety comes from. You'll remember from the video yesterday when I said that you were not born with health anxiety. Well, I was sort of implying that you inquired it somewhere along the way, not on purpose. So let me explain. Now, I'm only going to touch on the basics, really, of how someone can acquire health anxiety because it's not that important. I'll explain that later. Actually, I'll explain that to you now. So many people spend so much time wondering why they got health anxiety. Why did this happen to me? Will it ever go away? And I tell them the same thing. You're focusing on the wrong thing. I could come to your house personally now and spend a day, a week, a decade with you. And we could figure out and pinpoint, look, hey, there's why you got health anxiety. But will it make it go away? No then we have to actually undertake the work to help you get rid of it. And focusing on it actually makes it worse because when you're thinking about it, you won't feel all nice and light and fluffy in your body. You're going to feel more anxiety. So focusing on it is actually the wrong thing. But I'll get back to giving a quick overview of how it starts. You could have had ill health yourself when you were a child or any stage in your life, actually, that would make you more prone, if you like, to focusing on what you're feeling in your body. Or a family member or someone that you cared about could have been ill. Or it could be something completely unrelated. If you were going through a particularly stressful time in your life and maybe there was media coverage of some illness or health-related condition or disease or virus in the news or the media, that can make you more preoccupied with your own health because you're already feeling stress, you're more hypervigilant to danger and bang, your brain picks up on it. But try not to focus too much on what you believe may be the origin of the health anxiety because I don't believe that's worthwhile. I don't think that's the cause. I believe what I'm going to talk to you about next is the cause and this is what we focus on and we work with. Do you remember in the previous video when I was telling you about the path of least resistance and desire lines? Let's take a moment to think how these lines or pathways were first created. Imagine for you to get from point A to B, you have to cross through a huge big field of corn. And the first day you do this, it takes so much work. You have to cut through it. You get lost. You go back the next day and you can't even see any of the work that you've done. It takes a huge amount of effort. You go back again the next day and you think, oh, hang on, I can begin to see the path that I was working on. Then over time, you keep working on it. And when you go back, there's a well-trodden path. You don't even have to think about it. You can see it. It's clear. You just walk down it. It's automatic. Let's try this again. Only this time, we're going to have some health-related thoughts. Let's say, for example... One day, you're off in your merry way and you get a really sharp pain behind your eyes and you think, gosh, I wonder is that something serious? I wonder is it some sort of a tumour? I can remember the guy in work, he had an eye pain and he got a tumour. So it's understandable you think this way. At this stage, it's like the first time you try to pass through that cornfield. You have to battle your way through it. There's no path. But say tomorrow... Your head and your eyes, they're still a little sore and you think, gosh, this really could be something. What you're doing is you're starting to create a little pathway. If it happens over and over again, what you're doing, what's happening inside your brain is you've got a well-trodden path and you've no choice. It happens with no effort on your part. It's unconscious. You get any pain or sensation and automatically you'll be diverted through that well-trodden path of health anxiety Well, you'll go into the worst possible case scenario. You won't be able to see any less scary alternatives. It's like being in the cornfield, walking down that well-trodden path with corn 20 feet high on either side of you. There could be a completely different path, maybe 40, 50 feet away, but you can't see it. What I'm trying to say 
is that you will have your own well-trodden pathway in your brain relating to your own personal experience of health anxiety. It will contain all the thoughts you have, all the images you have, your fears, your worries, physical sensations, and it gets activated so easily. When this is triggered, you've no choice. You take the path of least resistance and keep doing what you always do, worrying about your health. You might cope by jumping onto Google, and that's what I want to look at at the minute. The things that you do that you think makes you feel a little bit better. So ask yourself, or I'll ask you, what do you do? Do you seek reassurance? And how do you seek this reassurance? I have a little experiment for you now. I want you to find out, as opposed to me telling you, if the things that you do to feel better, whether you seek reassurance or not, I want you to find out for yourself if they actually help, if they actually make you feel better. And they're in the next video. So you can just hit complete at the top of the screen here and you'll be taken to the next video.